Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I've still got a little bit more tweaking to do on this rear grill. Okay, so before I get stuck back into uh, doing a little bit of tweaking on this grill, um, a little bit of admin is um, I just got contacted by Neil at Performance Developments and one of the cylinders has got too much detonation damage to be able to uh, seal properly, so I need another 2.7 cylinder, just a factory cylinder. They're getting bored out and, uh, and recoded anyway, so um, if anybody has one, particularly if you're in the US, might be easier shipping than getting one here and sending it over, but uh, wherever you've got one, if you've got one lying around, please let me know so I can uh, get it off to Neil and we can get them off and get them done so I can get this engine underway. Um, we're working out bits and pieces. Uh, Neil's got the heads done and the rods done, and uh, like it's just a matter of working through and getting all the pieces together. So. Uh... All right, now getting back to this grill. One of the, uh, the f main things I noticed, particularly when I posted up the photos, is that the orange underneath the grill is really standing out. So uh, that's one of the first things to do is to, to black out the orange under the grill. The other thing that I was uh, looking at doing is continue the stripes over the top of the grill, keep the grill chrome, the bulk of the grill chrome, but follow the, the black and the purple stripes over the top of the grill. The only issue I suddenly worked out with that is that I'm not very happy with the fact that these bolts are not perfectly centered with the stripes. So um, now I need to pull it apart and see if I can do something about that. I'm such an idiot. I love making more work for myself. Look at what I did here. I've actually, I dropped the drill down and I chipped the paint. It's just a touch up. I can I can blow that in with the airbrush and it's just a pain. I really should think before I do these things. Holes are re-drilled and thankfully there's enough room on this grill. The washers will still cover the old holes so there's no problem there and um, I put some washers underneath the new rib nuts to give them a little bit of something to bite onto so they should be reasonably solid so thankfully um, if I don't chip any more paint it should be good. I'll take this off now and uh, now I've masked up these stripes I can start painting the stripes onto this um, cover. That's all touched up and I now have my mesh with my stripes on it. Um, the next thing I need to do is I am not overly happy with uh, seeing this orange underneath the grill. So I'm going to mask it up and give it a quick spray of black before I put the grill back on. And with my touch up, stupidity, I shouldn't have damaged it but it's touched back in and uh, there's a bit of a gloss difference there but this has all got to be chopped and buffed anyway so that'll be uh, tidied up later. It's just, why do I have to create extra work for myself all the time? All right, let's get into this. The next task I have to tackle, and I've already been uh, in here tearing apart, is 
As you might have seen a while ago, I fitted my aftermarket race pedal box. All I did was fit it and bolted it to the floor. So now I've sort of been putting it off because it's going to be a pain in the backside, but uh, I have to get these pedals to actually do something and connect them up to the linkages and stuff that uh, that are already there. So that is my next challenge. The brake is going to be relatively easy. I've just got to make up some uh, uh, brake lines, etc. That's that's the simple one. Um, it's a matter of getting a accelerator to actually work and the clutch. Let's have a look and see what I can work out. So after a bunch of playing around down under there, I was sort of trying to potentially use this old bracket that was um, that was used on the previous pedals, but by the time I put it in there and realised, you know, keeping the existing cables in there, I was going to have to make some mess of mechanical linkages. It would have been bodgy and uh, and ultimately I don't think it would have been very safe. I think the best course of action is to go through and um, and just get some custom cables made up. The clutch I could probably make up now uh, because the clutch is not going to move, but because I'm playing around with the accelerator anyway, uh, it's not going to be running the standard CIS. I will will wait until I've got an engine and then I'm going to have to do it then. So it means I can still go ahead and try and connect up the brakes. Connecting up the brakes means I need to work out what hard brake lines I need because I'm going to have to get some new hard brake lines to run to my uh, mass cylinders. Alright, so after a bit of playing around, I've uh, got a piece, a couple of bits of uh, old coat hanger, and I've made a rough mock up of the brake lines that I need to join into what I've currently got underneath the car. I'll take these in with me to wherever I find that I can get the brake lines made up, and these will be my templates. I'll just straighten them out, they'll make them, and I will bend them myself. and. Um, should hopefully have some brakes hooked up. Alright, I just realised that I haven't turned the microphone on yet this morning, so what I filmed earlier, I explained it all and uh, it will have no sound. So, um, so basically what I've done is I have made my mount up for my brake fluid reservoirs for my master cylinders and I've run two new lines with some rubber grommets down through the firewall, down into the, the brake pedals. Uh, at least this part of the brakes are done, the rest is going to have to wait until I get my pads. I've ordered some brake pads and I've ordered uh, some brake rebuild kits so when they get here I can do the brakes. But for now, I've been putting it off but I think I need to finish the dash. That's great, that's another annoying job that's been hanging over my head for ages that I've just sort of been putting off. I still have to replace the fan controls etc because they are busted beyond recognition now. So I'm trying to track down a, uh, another one of them, but um, just tidy it all up and um, yeah, we should be uh, almost done in here. Hi guys, did you know that the Porsche 914 was actually developed in conjunction with Volkswagen? The plan was to sell the four-cylinder as a VW and the six as a Porsche. In the end, VW dropped out and it was only sold as a Porsche. 
It actually outsold the 911 during its run, but only 3,300 of the 120,000 produced were actually 9146s. Now did you know that Porsche actually built two 9148s? One is with the 350 horsepower 908 race engine with quad headlights. The other was built with a detuned 908 engine making 300 horsepower as a gift for Ferry's 60th birthday. He didn't like the car very much, but it is still in the Porsche Museum today. Alright guys, the uh, stripes are done. I fixed up my silly little chip that I shouldn't have done in the first place and um, worked out bits and pieces about what I'm going to do with these pedals to get them connected up, which was... Um, it took actually a lot of time. It's not very exciting, but uh, it needed to be done. And, um, and I finally got that dash out of the way. Like, it's been hanging over my head for a long time, so that's sorted. So, uh, as always, <laughs> if you're enjoying the videos, please like and subscribe to my channel, Home Built by Jeff. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the same place. See you guys. Perfect. First go. How good is that? I'm all over it. <laughs> it's built with a D2908 engine making 300. A detuned 908 engine making 300 horsepower. The other was built with a detuned 908 horse. Hmm. <laughs>